This is the segment I'm most excited about. Uh, we've got uh, one of our listeners sent us a clip of uh, Jay Severin's show in Boston. Uh, Jay Severin's a really hateful guy. We ran a clip of his a uh, while back, and he got suspended for this, uh, when he talked about uh, Mexican immigrants and com compared them to, you know, uh, animals and, and, you know, said terrible things that went way beyond all, uh, the bounds of reason. And I thought he should have been fired over that, but he wasn't, of course. It wasn't the usual hateful rhetoric. It was, it, it's, it really sounded, um, you know, I hate to say this, but uh, from the old German days uh, when they used propaganda against the Jews and how they're little cockroaches, they need to be stepped on and terminated and all that stuff. So, um, so uh, our listener, Joel Mahari, sent us this clip from Jay Severin's show. He's up in Boston, and um, uh, he had a guest on that he was very, very excited about. I don't want to tell you who the guest is, uh, because the first clip is going to uh, show you him previewing the guest. Man, has I don't know if anyone's ever been this excited about any guest, and then you'll find out who it is. Okay, so fun for everybody. Clip number six. I'm prepared to admit to you that I am more excited to welcome this guest than any guest I've ever had in these 10-plus <laughs> years yeah, of service that? to you for more than 10th a century. Here on the radio. So it's no surprise then I considered what bumper music. You know, we, we pride ourselves on the bumper music. What bumper music ought I play for this guest? So this certainly occurred to me. James Brown living in America. But then I thought, oh, then I thought, no, no, it should be something more precisely in salute. To what he does, and I thought this. Because our next guest is the remedy to the communications breakdown we have had in this last generation. And then finally, I settled on this for the simple reason that it's the coolest piece of music I got out of 330 bumpers, and he's the coolest guy I know. Best and brightest, you have honored me with the question over the years, okay, but what can I do? What you can do is personified today in our, our next guest, Glenn Beck. You can watch Glenn Beck. You can watch his television show. The most entertaining and important television show, I believe, is going to be uh, proven in the history of television. Glenn Beck, welcome, and you're going to have to gird yourself for some admiration here. I uh, see. I think you're... I can't. I. I mean, I. The president of my company is the biggest Jay Severin fan of all time. He has spent the last seven years going, yeah, yeah, get over yourself. You know Jay Severin. And, How does he keep a job? I don't get that. I mean, well, because you're good. Yeah. And uh, you are and most like, well. I know. You are most uh, I welcome that. here, uh, Glenn Beck. I. I want to say about the book, and I, let me say this. I've. I've said it to you, and I want, and I've also said it on the air. I want to say it again. I'm holding the book, and this is a book. You know, I mean, this is a real book. It's like a real book. I mean, like it, like a, like my third grade history book. It's big and it's thick and it's like a a real book. Only it's like a movie. I I want to say my fantasy blurb for your book, Glenn, is it's a contemporary Thomas Paine. It's 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 philosophically lyrical. It's inspiringly pragmatic. Oh. It has all the substance of the Federalist Papers and the eye candy entertainment quotient of my kids' Wizard of Oz pop up books. Mine right now is an accordion because I fold in the pages when I find something interesting. Every page is folded in. It's a workbook. It's a movie. Yeah. It, 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 you know what? I thank you for that. Uh, what do we call that, Wes? Do we, is that a 69? Is that I, a... I'm wondering whether he spit or swallows. <laughs> Man, he went to work on that guy. Uh, it is a work. Of, you know what this is? This is a book. It's a book. It's a real book. I folded every. It's got page. pages. So it's I, got pages in. Not as it only does it's have. It's got pages. pictures. I folded every page. I folded every page. <laughs> it's like the Wizard of Oz. It's like the Federalist Papers. So, what music would you have chosen to welcome Glenn back on? Uh, I kind of had something in my mind, like that little, uh, the little march at the opening of, I guess, the beginning of the fourth movement of the Ninth Symphony for Beethoven. 
Uh-huh. Kind of sounds a little bit like that. <laughs> right. Or uh, clowns to the left of me, jokers to the right of Something me. Something clownish. <laughs> right. All right. So after they're done uh, filleting one another, uh, they get down to the serious work of revolution. So Severin is going to suggest some sort of revolution. Let's see what Beck's response is. I think you're probably going to guess. Uh, let's let the madmen talk. Clip number seven. When the founding fathers, in their wisdom and given the luxury of their choices of this rich English language and all the other possibilities, placed in the oath of office for president a clause which said against all enemies, foreign and domestic, would someone like me be crazy to begin to look around at the last eight months and say, is it possible that we are dealing with domestic enemies of the, constitu of the Constitution of the United States, as the founding would, fathers you, probably meant it? I think you would only be wrong in by saying the last eight months. I think that these uh, enemies have been working on this plan for a very long time. Um, you know, if you, if you have you gotten to the progressive section yet of the book? I'm at, I'm on page. 60, you know what? 60, I'm on page 69. I really That's am it? working okay. through it so no, slowly. You, you know, see, when you get to the progressive section, you'll see um, progressivism is the disease uh, to the Constitution. It is eating it like a cancer. And we're in the last stages of, of this cancer. And um, luckily, we, um, uh, we have now <laughs> uh, picked up smoking um, and everything else. Uh, you know, we're, we're rubbing red dye number two over our whole body here. <laughs> we're, we're just increasing our chances of dying of cancer quickly through Barack Obama. But the cancer is progressivism, and it is, it is waking the body up. And we're now saying, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What's going on here? And it's not too late to save the country. If we understand that, okay, we have a disease, it goes against the Constitution, it is called progressivism, it's nanny statism, it is it's statism, if you will. Um, in this particular administration, it's Marxism and revolutionaries uh, that are surrounding this president. Um, we're spending ourselves to death. There's no way out of that. We've got to stop, or there will be nothing left. Um, and uh, and we have to know what we really believe in. I mean, I believe the Constitution will stand. I believe this country was divinely inspired. But if the people don't know it, if they don't know facts, if they don't know why this country is great, why this country works, unlike any other country, when indeed um, the cancer becomes so uh, deadly that the patient can no longer stand, um, it will be lost forever if... If we don't learn it now, we've got to learn it and fight for it. I love the irony of Glenn Beck arguing that people should uh, learn facts. I don't think that's a call to revolution violence. That's a call to improve the public education system. <laughs> so that they understand what the Constitution is. So they understand what the is. hell they're talking about, yeah. <laughs> right. Well, you know, look, to be fair to Glenn Beck, uh, he mentioned later, he compared himself to Martin Luther King uh, and Mahatma Gandhi, okay? But now, why am I saying to be fair to him? I mean, of course, that's comical. But he said, let's do like they did, right? So he's, he put in a couple of references to nonviolence, right? But they're talking about how progressive is a disease. It's destroying the country. And these guys are Marxists, and they've taken over the country. And Wes, it feels like they're goading people, goading him, goading yeah, him, goading him. These guys are retards. And, and you know, sorry for saying that word, but, I mean, you're talking to people who really they don't know what they're talking about. And not that many people listen to them. Seriously. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Look, don't don't think that I over. I mean, what is, what, is, what that. is Glenn Beck? Is he like a? What I mean, he's he says he's not a Republican. What is he like a Libertarian? Yeah, that's what he claims. Okay. Right. Well, let's. Where does he live? Uh, my understanding is at this point in New York. Oh man, bummer. I was hoping he lived like suburban somewhere. Let's say because if you're a neighbor of his, just get rid of all those rules and ordinances. You don't need to have your garbage picked up by garbage men. Throw it in Glenn Beck's yard. <laughs> well, you want to set up a rifle range in your backyard? No problem if you live next to Glenn Beck. Set it up. Who needs rules and regulations? Have a party all night long. Open a bar on your front porch. Now, that's a great argument against libertarians and against Glenn Beck. But, but, of course, Glenn Beck, like you said, he doesn't know what he's talking about. He's not really a libertarian anyway because he's not in favor of legalizing marijuana or anything else. He's How in, could you not be in favor of legalizing marijuana? If you call yourself a libertarian. Seriously. Right? And then... 
and then he's in favor of getting between you and your doctor when it comes to abortion issues or birth control issues and the list goes on and on. No, he's just a conservative. He pretends that he's nonpartisan by calling himself a libertarian, right? I mean, and Jay Severin, don't, like I was going to say, don't overestimate who he is, of course. He's, I get that he's incredibly stupid. The comments he made earlier, it's, he said that Mexicans were the lowest form of primitives, okay? And that they were leeches on society. The only thing that Mexico ever brought to this country was women with mustaches and venereal diseases, okay? So, here, I'll give you a quick quote. When we are the magnet, magnet for primitives around the world, and it's not the primitives' fault, by the way, I'm not blaming them for being primitives, I'm merely observing that they're primitives, referring to the Mexicans, okay? Not that, just illegal immigrants, that Mexicans. Whole, that whole idea, that, that kind of meta idea of what he's talking about always drives me crazy, of the kind of the idiot who's like, white civilization did this. All right, let's see you write a symphony, dude. Let's see you put that TV together. Let's see you smelt that steel, smart guy. Oh, you don't know how to do it, do you? Right. I mean, it's they all think, oh, we're, we came up, we didn't come up with anything, man. We got lucky. We had some lucky breaks in the beginning, you know, and it was only lucky for some of the population. Mm -hmm. Now, look, I, I think it's been great accomplishments from all races, of course, of course, right? But that's but that's why they're missing the beauty of America and our Constitution, ironically, right? They talk about how the Constitution is being eaten away. Where in the Constitution does it say that it's you know, against all other races, okay? Now, I know in the beginning it did, <laughs> against African Americans, right? But and we, Native Americans. Right, but we amended that, right? And, and the Constitution does not, the whole point of the United States is not to discriminate. Give us the world, and we give them hope and give opportunity. People, give people the opportunity. Yes. That's all you want, just give them the opportunity. And, and you and, can't have the opportunity if you're not treated equally. Uh, obviously, right? And they, but they miss those obvious facts. If you like this little clip, you'll love the whole show. It loops 24-7 on theyoungturks.com. Go and check it out right now.